Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grey's Navi, and we couldn't do a new intro because we don't know how to do it. We got soldering irons from Secure. <laughs> We've seen all the pictures from you guys and from your emails and Facebook posts on different groups and stuff, and you're soldering pretty much just struggling. Yeah. It, a lot of people struggle with solder. And um, before we begin, question. Did you guys, um, for those, post below, how long did it take you to master soldering, or if you're still struggling with it, and why do you think you're struggling with it, if you are? So let us know in the comments below what you say, think about that. All right, so today we're gonna go over a couple of new soldering irons from a fairly new company called... Secure. Secure. And we got a couple different irons, we got a couple different uh, power sources, some tips, soldering tips. And a case to secure your secure iron. Yes. So stay tuned, we'll show you all about it, and we'll show you the benefits of using a lipo battery and the benefits of using a power supply or not yeah. benefits what do you want to call well, it? the difference of voltage though. like always if this video you find it useful and helpful hit that subscribe button and be sure to support grace and hobby if it's pack of props batteries quad jumper every radios, little bit helps everything uh everything ships from right here right mm-hmm uh located right outside atlanta georgia it's usually about two days to the entire east coast of the country also check out our Facebook group um, with a lot of tech support, help, stuff like that. We got a pretty good little community. Yeah, going. everybody's helping each other uh, out. Everybody's yep. been really good, very helpful in it. Million dollar question. What makes these better than the junk you get at Radio Shack or? Well, a lot of the stuff you'll find at like just Walmart, regular sporting, or not sporting, uh, like home improvement stores, stuff like that. Um, they're usually like 15 watt. The tips are the biggest thing. The tips on these are a much better quality. They hold up a lot longer. The ones that come on these crappy Harbor Freight style irons and all that, one, they're very low wattage, so they don't handle, plus they're made out of really crappy metal, so they just deteriorate really bad, and they don't hold the solder very well. These, um, they clean easy, they're just easy to work with, and my, in my experience, they've just been good. Yes. So it's one of those things, um, solder, it just makes your solder work that much better. All right, well, what do we got here today? Okay, so we have several products here from the brand Secure. Wait, hold on. All right, so today we have several products here from the Secure brand of soldering equipment. So we have the Secure um, SQ001 mini soldering iron. We have the SQD60B mini soldering iron. We have a power supply for AC adapter. We have some TSD24 tips. This is also the same for the TS100. Um, some little solder stands for like the iron stands, little sponges. And if you need to secure your secure iron, cases. All right, so this is pretty cool because they are very affordable. Yeah, they're actually uh, really well priced. Uh, if you guys seen any of our prior videos, the TS100, it's basically the same iron here. Um, I've been using that for a long time. Awesome iron, it does so much. Uh, it's great to have, if you're doing any sort of drone stuff or plane stuff where you're soldering, this is the stuff to get, guys. Don't mess with that Walmart soldering iron that just the crap that you'll find it's like a 15 25 watt don't bother throw it away get you a good iron or if you don't have a good iron you can't solder for crap if you can't solder for crap you're gonna have problems yep so this is what you need um well open it up let's go if you say oh well i only buy ready to fly quads guess what you're gonna break something eventually and you're gonna have to solder so let's get these guys open and we'll go from there so we're gonna start off with the sq001 which is like their ts100 the most popular one by far yeah this is the fancy this is the high-end one so you have the iron the tip that we are including with it is the sideways angle it's more of a blunt tip um, but it has a nice edge to it so if you do need a do small soldering as well that's like the bs2 or something like that yeah i think so okay. uh, it comes with a wrench and some screws that which you'd secure down if you ever lose or anything like that uh the little solder stand with the foam um the little sponge on it and a cord so this is really nice because the ts 100s and all that don't come with the cord it makes it very expensive by the time you buy a ten dollar cord etc and all that um has a nice little manual paper manual which is kind of getting kind of rare nowadays because everything is like oh scan this qr code oh right there um <laughs> but at least it comes with one. yeah um and i think that's a little oh, diagram a little in, that's pretty cool yeah i don't know why the i guess it's, it's just the uh, oh repair. firmware upgrade so it is firmware upgradable for anybody asking so i'd imagine this can take the same aftermarket firmware as the ts100 why where you can, would you want to upgrade your firmware different on... sleep timer stuff like that it's actually pretty cool Sorry. i've done it on mine in the past where it just made it to where it um stayed warmer longer you can boost the temperature etc okay um the iron itself weighs like nothing it's so amazing how light these things are well tell us how that powers up well this you're gonna loosen the screw here this will slide in there and then you lock it back down. Okay. And as far as powering the iron, this is what it makes it Not cool. the USB, the USB is for like anti-static and firmware updates. Um, you plug in here and then you plug this into a four cell battery. Or 
anything from 12 to 24 volts. Guys, if you've done a six cell on TS 100s, post below because I actually have not tried a six cell. I've only done five and four cells because it's what I had laying around in the in the junk box of my uh, soldering stuff. All right, how about how long will it work on a battery? Well, it's 65 watts, so voltage divided by I don't know. Okay. But if you know the one answer, charge should last the whole build for sure. Like okay. if you're building from scratch a lot, and but it depends on the battery. If you use an 800 milliamp four cell, yeah, yeah it's not going to last as long as a 1500 or 2200. So this is perfect for any. Yeah, and this uh, is just a generic battery right field, here at the field. Um, yeah, yeah. Basically, you can take your quad battery laying around like one of your old beat up ones and, and use that. Wire comes yeah. undone, and you crash it comes undone. Yeah. Or if you have to fix a car out in the driveway and you don't want to lug out the power, this, you uh, keep the putting this here because I want to. Yeah, in frame. <laughs> but for those who don't want to use their battery, what then do? you can get the power supply. So moving to a different product, I'm going to slide this over if that's okay. Good lead in there. This is the SQ001 electric soldering iron adapter. Wee! So this is basically kind of like a laptop power supply, and it comes with the 5525 DC jack. Um, that will plug in right here. It will plug in place of this. So this will unplug and you'll plug that into here okay. and it's got just a regular cord and that way you can have unlimited power yeah. so you'll see dc 5525 that's the name of the connector okay. for those that you may possibly have a laptop uh, power supply laying around from an old computer some of them do have that connector make sure the polarity is bright otherwise you fry these yes um but this one happens to be a 19 volt at 3.42 amps so that's like exactly the same as the one from my old Toshiba laptop um that i use so that's pretty cool yeah, i'm sure um, the Toshiba laptop was like 10 times the amount of Price. Oh yeah, it was like a sixty dollar power supply. Right. Well, but it, you know, it came with the laptop, obviously. Right, so that's that. So, so I, that's this is the high end one. This is the power supply here. This is an aftermarket thing you can do. Okay. Let's move on to the base unit. Okay. So I actually have not seen this one open yet. This is the sixty watt version. So the high end one sixty five. This one's sixty. It's five less watts. Whether you notice it, probably not. Um, the biggest thing is the physical looks is different and the display. So the display on this one. Is a regular LED. Well, plug it in, plug it up. All right, let's put a tip in it first. Okay, so what do we got here? This is the, yeah. This is the 60. 60 watt. So you'll see here, number, what does 25 mean? Oh, there you go. Okay, so now it's the temperature. It's heating up, yeah. I'm gonna guess it's in This is Celsius, Celsius yes. Yeah. And while we're waiting on the heat up, what's the favorite temperature that you like to heat and solder? Depends on the stuff, but uh, typically small wires, 300 degrees Celsius, medium wires, 350, and if it's super big wire, I'm usually actually about 400, but it, you know, if you hold too much heat on too long on a small wire, stuff like that, you can damage the traces. So that's so yeah. you're good at it, and we all posted the link there, but you basically tap, touch it, tap it for instant. Yeah. So this is adjustable, like it's set to 300 right now. You okay. can turn it up. So that's just a plain Jane uh, LED screen. Yeah. So it's a very basic display. It doesn't have some of the fanciness of the other display. Now it's um, down, it looks like. Yeah, probably because it's not. So that's that. Yeah. So that's the iron there. Let me go ahead and unplug that. And remember, those are hot for a minute. <laughs> they heat up quick. Um, the difference between the irons, I would say, and a rough check, the TS100 style, the um, SQ001. Let's plug that guy in and check out the... Um, out of back on the screw. It's got it, the same screw. It, same it, screw. Where's that screw? It's under the rubber grip. Oh, okay. I didn't see that part. Oh, uh, it's hiding on me. Yeah. All right. So they don't come screwed in all the way down from the factory kind of thing. You just slide that up. And for as often as you'll change the tip, probably not, um, unless you are putting it in and out of the case. Cause so now you got him all, all assembled? Yeah. So we got them assembled. Some um, assembly required. Go right? ahead and plug this one in too. So that see. very it looks very similar to yeah. my siren iron. So you see, I think it heats up a hair quicker, but again, it could be the display just reads faster. Yeah, it clearly says C for Celsius. Yeah, Celsius. It's probably set to 300 out of the box as well, yeah. yeah. So, and this battery's kind of low, so it might not be holding yeah. as well. But um, that's pretty much all there is to it. And you can adjust the temperature as well there. So tell us about so this. For new... those of you asking about the iron power, it's right here on the chart. SQD60B, this is the basic model, this one. So you can see the difference, like if you're only putting a three cell battery into it, you only have like 17 watts of power. Uh, it takes about 100 seconds to completely heat up. Um, if you run a four cell, 30 watts of power, takes about 40 seconds, 19 volts is which is what the power supply is. And that's what I personally use is about five volt, uh, five cell voltage. It's a 40 watt, 22 seconds. So I've done 10 gauge wire with a 40 watt 
setting on this. Uh, if you run all the way up to 24 volts, you'll get a full 60 watts, and it look how quick it heats up. 13 seconds. I mean, that's ridiculous. And just to remind everybody, what is this guy? 19 volts. So that's going to be a 40, vo uh, 40, 40 watt, watt, essentially, setting. So you would need, you want to get to take full advantage of that 60 watt, you need to have a battery. Honestly, I don't think you'll need it though. Unless yeah, you're just doing like eight gauge wire all the time. In yeah. that case, you're gonna need to buy the wider tip anyway mm -hmm. um, to really transfer the heat. Personally, for anything I've seen drone wise, you know, even if you're building the larger multi-rotor drones and all that, or the planes, like most of the wiring on those is not even eight gauge. Um, this is gonna cover 90, 99% of your right. soldering. Job. So I guess to answer your question from the beginning, you can use a six cell. Is this it? Well, 24 volt. That's nominal voltage though. Right. Six cell battery is. Let's try it. You gonna fry it? Let's All right, try let's, it. Fry it. Let's, let's try it. Let's fry it. <laughs> okay, somebody told me we're not allowed to catch the building on fire, so to take all the fun out of it, we're not gonna hook it up to the. All right, so we're gonna plug this in. This battery, for example, is a six cell. Um, it's actually in storage charge, which is 22.8 volts. Uh, well, it's a little lower below storage. But um, so, guys, if you have a six cell battery in your flight box, you don't fly four cell. Just leave your battery at storage and you're going to be well under the, the 24 volt rating. Um, plug it in. There it goes. And let's start it. Oh, wow. Okay, that heats up really quick. So and I forgot to start counting, but. Uh, 300. Yeah. Oh, that's going past 300. 347. Well, I set it to 350, okay. I believe. So, I mean, it heats up really, really quick. Really quick, wow. Um, so, insane. yeah, so if you have a six cell battery, absolutely. I don't even know why I asked that question earlier. This, there's an answer. Um, may not want to use a fully charged six cell, but one probably that's already been used, or at least a storage, just for safety, because the last thing you want to do is pop these. Uh, if, again, but if you guys have been using fully charged six cells, let us know below. Um, I just don't feel like frying a brand new iron that I haven't used yet. Um, for What's the, sake the fun of, of doing videos? I know, now. I know. That's when we take apart jumpers and break them. So please. let's plug in the T. So that is the difference. The well, hold on, hold on. Let's plug, one. plug in this guy. Okay. With the six cell, and according to the chart, he's supposed to take eleven seconds to get to three hundred watts. Yes. So hook it up to three hundred watts or three hundred Celsius. And we're gonna and go. One. Oh wait, go. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen seconds. Well, so we're right in the eight, nineteen. Oh no, volt. it says fifteen seconds with nineteen. Oh wait, we're at twenty-two. So we're a little bit in between. So yeah. Yeah, that's good. So I guess a fully charged will get you that full. Yeah. Right. So basically, guys, if you are going to run the power supply um, at nineteen volts, they are both producing forty watts. So that's basically puts them on the same playing field between the cheaper one and the more expensive one. Uh, if you're gonna be on the field using a six cell battery, or well, six cell battery when I have one in my hand, um, then you will get a little more power out of the SQ001, um, the higher end model. So that's gonna be the biggest difference. Between that, they're pretty much the same except you get a little more boost, that's still hot. You get a little more boost to power with that, but other than that, you get a, basically you're paying for the fancier display. So that's the biggest thing to keep in mind between the two. Um, and as far as dark, shell. And just the, the, you like that one, right? The, well, I mean, the ergonomics, that's uh, nice. It, While we're at it. Oh yeah, always use flux when you're soldering. This is paste flux. You can use liquid flux if that's what you like, but I, I like paste flux. That's what Will uses. And I'll show you what he uses right here. Yeah. There, there's his little workbench right here, so. Um, solder wise, 6337. Um, it's tin lead mix or 6040. Either one works fine. I heard um, this guy gives you less of a upper chance of a cold solder. Yeah, I think it actually cures a little quicker, I guess yeah. you'd say. Um, but you, I've had, I've used this one and this one. I mean, I kind of know what I'm doing. Just don't get lead free. If you're going to find some locally, don't get lead free solder. It sucks to solder. We want the lead and um, stuff. Just the don't lead eat stuff it. Works. Yeah, just don't eat it. I mean, if you want to lick it a little bit, no, don't do that. Um, but basically, uh, 6040, 6337, definitely the two to use for your solders. And they vary in price. You can get some for under four bucks or over 10, depending on how much you want. Um, but the flux is the key, guys. The, the paste flux, I like. Um, works really good. It's like a magnet for solder. It kind of keeps the solder sucked to the, the pads and all that. Hold that thought. If you're not good at soldering. Oh. <laughs> now, um, this is not a holy grail by any means, but it is a solder board. Which we did a video on this one as well. Yes, keep in mind. The full circle. That. 
It's in a bag, more bags. Um, solder pad, so this is a good little thing if you're learning how to solder and all that. Um, what does that say? Good, good, hold on. This is a newer batch, so let's see what they say on it. Uh -oh. Good, good study, sure. day, day up. What? Diatone? WTF Diatone. Good, good study, day, day up. Come on, you don't know that rhyme? Cut. And while we're at it. Oh yeah, always use flux when you're soldering. This is paste flux. You can use liquid flux if that's what you like, but I, I like paste flux. That's what Will uses. And I'll show you what he uses right here. Yeah. There's his little workbench right here, so. Um, solder wise, 6337, um, it's tin lead mix or 6040. Either one works fine. I heard um, this guy gives you less of a upper chance of a cold solder. Yeah, I think it actually cures a little quicker, I guess yeah. you'd say. Um, but you, I've had, I've used this one and this one. I mean, I kind of know what I'm doing. Just don't get lead free. If you're gonna find some locally, don't get lead free solder. It sucks to solder. We with. want the lead um, and stuff. Just the don't lead eat stuff it. Works. Yeah, just don't eat it. I mean, if you want to lick it a little bit, no, don't do that. Um, but basically, uh, 6040, 6337, definitely the two to use for your solders. And they vary in price. You can get some for under four bucks or over 10, depending on how much you want. Um, but the flux is the key, guys. The, the paste flux, I like. Um, works really good. It's like a magnet for solder. It kind of keeps the solder sucked to the, the pads and all that. Hold that thought. If you're not good at soldering. Um... Solder pad. So this is a good little thing if you're learning how to solder and all that. Um, what does that say? Good, good. Hold on. This is a newer batch, so let's see what they say on it. Uh -oh. Good, good study, sure. day, day up. What? Diatone? Hold WTF on. Hold on. diatone. Good, good study, day, day up. Come on, you don't know that rhyme? Oh, there it is. What do you guys think about this new iron? Irons? Would you go with the more expensive one? For 10 bucks, 15 bucks more, or you go with the, the cheaper one. I don't even know if it's really cheaper in terms of like features. It's just. It's a lower price, cheaper screen. That's really it. Yay. It's just a screen, right? For the most part. For the most part, yes. I mean, it still gets hot, and you use the same tips, right? Yes. I don't know. So, anyways, but these are nice little irons. They look exactly like the TS100, which was the hottest thing for the last few years. A little pricey. These come in way under the price of the TS100. Um, and you get all the accessories because the biggest thing like Will said earlier You buy the iron you got to go buy figure this out And this is but again the ones the secure brand does include the cables for batteries. It does Unlike other ones. Yes. Un yes. 